This is the third and final time moving the chicken coop. I built the chicken coop so it could be fairly easily disassembled and reassembled. But if everything goes as planned, we should never have to move the chicken coop again. In the process of moving the chicken coop, we thought it was a good time to get the old bench that I made out of a couple of old Chevy hoods and my grandfather's old wheelbarrow. There's definitely something satisfying about moving stuff up here for the last time. Our intentions are to let the chickens free range as much as possible, but I will more than likely build some fencing around the chicken coop to keep them in as needed. We do have an abundance of predator birds up here that we'll have to watch closely. It's possible we'll have to put some netting over the top of the chicken coop to protect the chickens. But if we have our way, they'll spend more time outside of the coop than in. We've had a drone for a while, but every time we get it out, we seem to have issues with the camera on it. It's a good quality drone, but we've got some tweaking to do with it. But it's fun to look at the perspective from above. It really starts to show just how much work we've gotten done clearing the hillside off. We will be picking up little pieces of maple for years to come on the hillside, but for the most part we've done all the thinning that we need to. We may in fact plant some evergreens the next couple of weeks. But from here on out it's about making the land that we have fit our lifestyle, whether it's for livestock or for pleasure.
While cleaning up the hillside, I stumble onto these Potawatomi plum trees from time to time. Every time I see them, I do my best to protect them. I make a middle note where they are, and it's a perfect time to transplant them now. Our plan is to have enough of them across the front of the property that creates a little bit of a buffer between us and the road. I spent very little money building that chicken coop. The old front door was thrown away at the junkyard, my favorite place to shop, and I cut it down and made it work. The dug first siding that I used came from a friend's old chicken house that was being torn down. I'll put a link to the playlist at the end of the video showing some of the repurposed and recycled projects we've done over the last few years. We have a number of cedar trees that I've taken down as well. I've tried to limb them and have them prepared to use for everything from shelving in the closets to fence posts around the property. I try to leave a few here and there, but most of the lower hillside I wanted to keep in maples. We had one particular maple down here that's dying and I needed to cut it down. From this point on, I hope to not have to cut down any big mature maple trees anymore. But when I do, they must be turned into firewood. We're finally into warmer months and I still have a paranoia about not having enough firewood around the property. Over the next few months, we will stack at least five, maybe even 10 cords for the coming winter. I've taken a little bit of time away from the drywall, but I try to make myself take a few hours and get something done every chance I get. Under the direction of my father-in-law, I went down and bought a 14 inch wide knife instead of the 10 inch wide knife that I had been using. It's taking a little bit to get used to, but it's obviously working much better for the final coat. In the back of my head, I tell myself that the drywall is holding everything up and I've got to make myself do it. It's hard not to jump in the excavator, drive to the back of the property where I have a little spot picked out where I want to build a cabin and clear some trees there. But I've told myself I'm not gonna do that until the drywall and paint and cabinets are finished. There's a beautiful little spot back in the back where myself and Cedar have been talking about building a little small, maybe a 15 by 15 cabin for quite some time. I've wanted to build a little small cabin myself for more than 20 years now. The idea that we could have a little cabin on the back of the property that maybe myself and Cedar could escape to for a night, or maybe I take my boys and go up there, or maybe we use it for a deer camp. But there's a beautiful spot in a maple grove right beside a gigantic Douglas fir tree where I want to put this cabin. As soon as the house is finished and as soon as we're moved into it, this is more than likely going to be in my focus for the rest of the summer. If the cabin goes as well as I think it will, I may in fact build the shop in the same way. I want to do it on a smaller scale, use my sawmill, see how it turns out before I put the effort into falling and milling up all the logs that I'll need for the shop. The shop foundation is 40 feet by 40 feet. 
And to me, it would be awesome to build a huge cabin style shop where we may have a couple of rooms in there for friends and family when they come to visit. But for the most part, it'll be just a well insulated building that should blend in perfectly. At some point later this summer, I'll take the time to clear the spot for the little cabin.